Hey guys, Super Techie Will here, back with a new video. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Amazon's new $50 tablet, the Kindle Fire. Yes, it is $50, and I am very interested to see what a $50 tablet has to offer. Let's not waste any time, and let's get started. First, let's take a quick look at the specifications. This tablet has a 7-inch IPS display at a resolution of 1024 by 600 pixels. It has a 1.3 GHz quad-core processor. 8 gigs of internal storage, 128 gigabyte expandable storage. The tablet is running on Fire OS 5, and it also has front and rear facing cameras. Moving on to the design of this tablet, its most notable aspect is its thickness, it is about two iPad Airs thick. Also, its bezels are pretty humongous. Amazon is not trying to win over anyone with the design of this tablet. On the top, we have the volume rocker, micro USB port audio port, microphone, and power button. Yes, all the buttons are on the top of the device, and I found this weird until I realized that the logic board is close to the top of the device. In order to save money, Amazon put everything as close as possible to the logic board. Well, except for the speaker, which is in the lower left corner of the back of the device. The new Kindle Fire includes a micro SD card slot, which is something of a rarity nowadays in mobile devices. This screen is clearly low res, at least to my eyes. After watching some videos, the color reproduction is not there at all, and off angle views will either give you a sort of double internal reflection effect or a washed out view at the diagonals. The new Fire OS 5 operating system is a variant of the Android Lollipop operating system and even though you are still restricted customization wise, you will still enjoy a mostly stock notifications pull down, multitasking pop up, and settings app. Using this OS was typically smooth, I had some hiccups now and again when swapping through the menus on the home screen, but I was and am still generally impressed with its performance throughout the operating system. Multitasking seemed pretty fluid with pretty quick recoveries when switching apps. Speaking of apps, I can say that gaming will be a little difficult on this device. I only played Minecraft, but I believe the performance in that game tells the full story. It is, you know, not shockingly, a slower device. On max render distance and quality in that game, the game plays on the lower end of the FPS counter and tends to stutter sometimes yet the game is still playable on those settings. Just be mindful that more stressful games would definitely beat this device up. The device sports two cameras, front facing and back facing. Both are really bad and I actually sort of question the inclusion of them in the device. Pictures come out horribly grainy with even the best lighting setup. And you know, I understand this is a $50 tablet, but why include the cameras at all if this is all you can afford? What's just as bad as the cameras though is the battery life. With normal use, I would typically use up 10% in about 20 to 40 minutes. This isn't so bad until you get to the standby time. The tablet went from 100% to dead in standby in about 48 hours. I did not touch the device for about two days and it was dead. It almost seems like the Kindle Fire lacks an efficient sleep cycle and I suspect this is because of overactive Wi-Fi use, even though the tablet does have an option to suspend Wi-Fi during standby. Nonetheless, this is completely unacceptable. This device relies on lock screen ads to make up for the device's low cost. I do not find them annoying, but what bothers me is that the advertising makes its way into every aspect of the home screen. Within each media tab, you will find the media you own alongside the media Amazon is recommending to you. This is what Amazon does and what they're the best at, and they're not going to change that anytime soon. Lastly, Amazon's App Store has always been hit and miss, but has developed more since its initial launch. The lack of a legitimate YouTube app is quite concerning. However, this makes sense since Amazon owns Twitch now, and YouTube and Twitch are competitors. So what is my final verdict? The new Kindle Fire is not great, but it's not supposed to be at $50. This is not a true gaming nor a really good productivity device. If you plan on streaming videos, music, or even reading ebooks, this tablet will suit you. Just do not expect to Skype with any form of great quality or be able to leave this tablet sitting around a couple of days unplugged. Scoring this device, I decided to be somewhat charitable and give it a C plus. 
I was originally going to give it a B, but after putting more thought into it, I felt that the device could be improved in a few areas without breaking the budget. Nevertheless, I enjoyed reviewing the new Kindle Fire, and I also hope that you found this review useful. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a like down below, and also subscribe to my channel, Super Techie Will. I also have a Twitter, at Super Techie Will. Follow me there. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Stay super.